Hello. Can you hear me on the mic? Yep. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, folks at home. Sorry, we're running a few minutes late. Technical difficulties, which uh, we'll just give thanks that the rain has stopped. The sun is trying to poke out, and it is good to be together this morning. It is the fourth Sunday of Easter. Remember, uh, Easter is a, is a week of weeks, 50 days long, till we get to Pentecost. Um, and we continue to celebrate and proclaim the good news of Christ's resurrection. This fourth Sunday of Easter every year is Good Shepherd Sunday. No matter which liturgical cycle we're in, uh, we hear the story of Jesus the Good Shepherd. And I'll share a reflection about that in uh, a little bit later in our service. Couple things uh, today at the beginning of our service, uh, there's a prayer for peace that we'll be praying together. Our bishop, uh, the Reverend Suzanne Darcy Dillahunt, sent out uh, an invitation to all the congregations in our synod to pray this prayer together, that it might be prayed all across our synod and indeed all across the church for uh, for peace in our world, in our communities, in our own lives. So. Um, we will we will pray that prayer together uh, with our siblings in Christ uh, all across this synod today. For those of you who are watching our live stream, we will be sharing communion. So I invite you to grab uh, bread and wine, crackers and juice, whatever staple food and festive drink is close at hand for later in the service. I think that's all I need to say by way of introduction, uh, except again, welcome and glad you are here. Let's proclaim the good news of Easter. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray together. Holy God, out of your great love for the world, your word became flesh to live among us and to reconcile us to you and to one another. Rekindle among us the gift of your spirit, so that we seek to live in unity with all people, breaking down the walls that divide, ending the hostility among us, and proclaiming peace to those who are near and to those who are far away. Through Jesus Christ, in whom we all have access in the one spirit to you, both now and forever. Amen. Oh. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We're going to do the psalm as responsorial, so I will read the non-bolded text, and then you'll read the bolded text. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from 1 John. We know love by this that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sets, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace, friends, from God our Father, through Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. There is a whole lot of really rich scripture today. So many uh, favorite verses and so many things that we can think about on Good Shepherd Sunday. Of course, I always think about and want to sing, uh, you know, one of my favorite camp songs, I Just Want to Be a Sheep, right? Ba, 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 ba. Um, I'm not going to make you sing that today, though. Instead, today I want to share with you a reflection from the Reverend Kellen Day. Um, I think she writes beautifully. Um, an angle on Good Shepherd Sunday I hadn't really thought about. Every year, uh, regardless of the lectionary cycle, we're invited to live in a rich metaphorical world. A world where there are a whole slew of sheep and one good sacrificial shepherd. It can be a funny world to live in since not many of us have firsthand experience living off the land or tending to a flock or roaming about foraging for food. Any shepherds? Yeah, it's an experience that we don't necessarily uh, really grasp, right? And it may seem silly, even a bit embarrassing and put on to do so, but scripture is really inviting us today to try out this world. God is inviting us to live among the grassy slopes and rocky hillsides. While we often ask the words and stories of scriptures to enter our worlds this morning, scripture is patiently and imaginatively asking us to enter its world. There are many ways to live in this metaphorical world. One could do heaps of research on the ins and outs of Old Testament shepherding or the varieties of first century shepherding. One could think intently about the landscape that sheep inhabit, pastures and scary valleys as the psalmist so vividly preaches. One could even dig into the not so subtle sacrificial overtones of today's readings, plumbing the rich depths of Passover imagery and the cleansing quality of blood. But instead, we shall inhabit our metaphor in a simpler manner. We shall imagine where we might find ourselves in this world. And since there are not too many animate options, and it seems rather obvious who we'd be, let us imagine ourselves taking on the furry wool of a sheep nuzzling our noses into the supple earth and meandering around with the other sheep buddies that are in our flock, listening for that one voice who calls us by name. What then does it mean to be a sheep when we immerse ourselves in this text? To be a sheep at its most basic is to be a creature. Sheep probably do not contemplate whether or not they are God. They likely do not spend their days thinking about ambition and success and storing up wealth for themselves. 
They have much more pressing tasks to tend to. For instance, they must eat and eat and eat. And when they're done eating, they need to take a little rest. Perhaps they will find that they need some time to roughhouse and playfully pick on one another. Then they find that they need to rest. Maybe cuddling up in a heap, snoozing a bit in the sun or the shade of a tree depending on their desired temperature. They don't spend their days thinking that they are the source of all that is the center of the universe, nor the creature at the heart of creation. Sheep, it seems, are just happy to be sheep, eating and walking and playing and sleeping and bleeding their way through life. The sheep is a creature created and loved by their creator. Being sheep also means being part of a community, a herd. They are safest and happiest as part of a big community of sheep. When one does wander off, it knows it is alone and scared and in a precarious position. It knows that out here on this hillside all by itself, it will be an easy and quick dinner for that wolf or some other roaming predator. Sometimes a sheep gets lost, it's true, but most sheep know to stick together, that their body depends on other bodies forming into one large protective pile. Sheep don't think that they should live all alone, independent and never ever reliant upon any other sheep. A life alone would be a sad and crazy life for a sheep. Sheep know that they need other sheep desperately because their very lives depend on it. And while we could say lots of other things about sheep, like how they're fairly intelligent and how their wool is used to warm lots of other creatures around the world, let's conclude with one last thing about being a sheep. Sheep are followers. Hello, sunshine. Sheep are followers. Now this is where it gets a bit trickier for us to really imagine ourselves being sheep. But go with me on this. Even if you think you're a naturally skilled, born to be leader, sheep are followers because they have no idea where they're going. They don't have an internal GPS system that's highlighted all the best pastures around them. They would stay in their same pasture eating stubbly little grass, or they would wander into the dens of wolves. They need someone to call out their names, and yes, sheep do respond to their names, and they need someone to yell out, hey, over here, over here is some really thick and luscious grass for you to eat. Sheep need a guide, someone who knows their need and can needs and can tend to them, someone to ward off scary wolves and defend them in the face of danger someone who will memorize their markings, knowing their distinctive identities, someone who will help bring new lambs into the world, someone who will bury those who have died from illness and age, someone who is trustworthy, and someone who knows the lay of the land, the places of danger and the places of respite. Friends, we are sheep in this metaphorical world because we can't be anything but sheep. We are not really the ruler of our lives like we like to pretend. We're not the rulers of our lives, of our herds, nor the master of our destiny. To be a sheep, and at this point it is glaringly obvious, is remarkably similar to being a human. Creatures who need community and who can't help but follow since we have no idea where we are going in the first place. We are sheep because we are in desperate need of a shepherd. Thankfully, we have a shepherd that is a particularly good shepherd. One who will lay his life down for you. For me, a mere sheep? Yes, 
he will lay down his life for you, for me, for the whole flock, and indeed, for the whole world. This good shepherd will take you on a long and winding journey. And as you follow this shepherd, there will be days where you wonder to yourself, does this shepherd know what he's doing? I mean, it seems to be taking us to a far and strange land. I've never been here before. I don't recognize this place. I'm not comfortable here. Those pastures back there seemed good enough. Why, oh why, are we traveling again? It's scary out here. But then you arrive. And upon your arrival, there will be such glorious sustenance unexpected gifts of joy and immense confirmation that this good shepherd knows what he's doing. Your dry mouth will be replenished and your hungry belly will be filled. You will know the solace of being known and the grace of not having to have it all figured out by yourself. Because the good shepherd is taking care of you. The good shepherd is beckoning to the flock. Can you hear it? He's singing out your name. He's inviting you to get close, to join the herd for the journey, to rejoice in your created goodness and to follow him wherever he leads, even through those valleys of death. So will you follow? Will you go where he calls? Will you let him love you? Will you let him carry you when you're wounded and heal your loneliness? Will you trust him, the good shepherd, with your very life? Surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.
Let us pray for the church, the world, and all people according to their needs. Dear God, our creator and redeemer, the stone that was rejected has become the cornerstone. Thank you for sending your son into the world for each of us. Thank you for providing hope in times of despair, friendship in times of loneliness, and love in times of struggle. Help us to share your hope, friendship, and love with the world, not in word and speech, but in truth and action. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, thank you for the many blessings in our lives. We're grateful for the production of vaccines and advances in healthcare. We are thankful for opportunities to gather in person and online. When life seems difficult or uncertain, help us to remember that you are our shepherd and that you are always guiding us and helping us. Please help us to follow your path and to share our many blessings with our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, be with those whose lives are filled with danger of any sort. We ask you to help our leaders around the world to work for peace instead of conflict. Please protect those who serve in the military, comfort military families, and bless our veterans. We ask you to also bless all refugees and help them to find comfort, respect, and acceptance. And please help all of us in our efforts to bring peace and justice to all of the world, to teach tolerance, respect for all, and to defend, aid, and advocate for the poor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, we ask you to comfort those experiencing grief and loss and to relieve those who are suffering. Please also bring strength to those who are hospitalized, confined to homes, or undergoing tests. Please also help the doctors, nurses, and other healthcare workers who are caring for the sick and looking for ways to cure disease. We pray for healing for anyone who is ill in mind, body, or spirit. Restore to wholeness those who are struggling with addictions. Bless our shut-ins and help us to bring them joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, be with those to whom death draws near and those who have lost loved ones. Bring peace and comfort to all who mourn, knowing with the conviction of our faith that because you so loved the world that you gave your chosen son who died and rose again, we too will have eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also
those who are joining us by live stream, this is the time to have those communion elements ready. Friends who are gathered here today, if you didn't grab a communion cup on your way in, you'll want to go grab that now. Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who living among us healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, it is the risen Christ who invites us to this table. Come, eat, and be satisfied. As we share this bread, it is the body of Christ given for you.
As we share the cup, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace, mercy, and peace now and always. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, friends, I, the only announcement I have this morning is uh, an invitation this week. Um, members of the church will be receiving this year's Stewardship Times, and we begin our, our time of um, thinking about our commitment of time, talents, and treasures for the coming year. Um, our annual meeting is coming up at the end of June. Uh, we have a lot of, of wonderful work ahead of us as we anticipate uh, coming into the new normal, right? We're, we're, we're not expecting that things are going to just return to the way we are. We've learned a lot through this last year, and we have an opportunity to grow the things that, that are growing, that, that need to continue to grow, of letting go of some things that that don't make sense anymore. It's a real opportunity. And as we dream about and think about together, especially as we are beginning to engage a, a long range planning project, um, we, have, we have real opportunity. So as you receive that packet of information in the mail this week, please begin to pray. Pray heartily for the Holy Spirit at work in our midst uh, and, and listening to where the Good Shepherd is calling us to be, trusting in the Good Shepherd and all the work that, that we are being asked to do as a place of ministry here in this place and in this time. Pray for our life and work together. Pray that as we begin to return to the new normal, we will find uh, those green pastures where we will be fed richly and we can invite others to come and be fed as well. It's a wonderful opportunity. I'm so excited for uh, this year ahead um, and, and to see what it holds. And I'm grateful for your partnership in that ministry as we move into that new future. Are there any other announcements for the good of the order today? I can't think of anything else except uh, it's already coming up to the end of April. Uh, so we'll be um, having a newsletter coming out soon. Uh, just keep your eye out for all the opportunities that begin to grow up again now as, as we move into this, this new phase together. Let's stand as we're able to hear God's blessing on our way. As once again we proclaim the good news of Easter. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia! Alleluia. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know, to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. May the God of life, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.